that top spot, but uh, in the end, they got knocked out, but I believe it was uh, Team Excellent last cycle. Here they are in this cycle. They got knocked down uh, to to the loser's bracket by actually, let me double check on that real quickly, uh, too much sugar. They got knocked down by State Green, of course, and they fought their way through the loser's bracket to now match up against Ready for a Miracle. Now, with that said, Ready for a Miracle, again, if, you are, if you're tuning in and you're saying, wait, who the hell are these guys? I know there's been a lot of questions about that, understandably so. These guys... We don't know much about them. A couple of their names, well, here, here's some facts, though. One is that they were in Gold Cycle 1. They finished second place in Gold in Cycle 1, and they actually came to this cycle now. They were originally knocked out of the losers bracket in the very first round by, guess who? Too Much Sugar. They lost that series two games to nothing, but they have fought their way back in the losers bracket, including defeating teams of the likes of Locomotives and Justice League to get to this point. So clearly a team that we have to look out for. And uh, definitely a pretty pretty aggressive team. Uh, we looked at their average kills. I mean, they were averaging something like 28 kills per game uh, so far. I think it's only based off five or six games or something like that. So it's very, very small sample size. But anyways, this team likes the action, likes to get kills, it seems like. So I'm looking forward to them playing against TMSR here. Now, with that said... TMSR, yes, they're probably the favorite, and a lot of people, I mean, uh, I, I think it's safely assumed TMSR could even win it, but uh, in the end, I would not be surprised. I mean, we, we got to see RFM against, uh, play against actually Locomotives when they beat them two games to nothing, and they were pretty impressive. They were definitely pretty impressive. So, anyways, that's kind of a quick, uh, quick look at what we have coming for you guys. So, with that said, let's look at game number one here and see, at, well, what the hell is going on. So... As far as the bands are concerned, we got Rally, Pebbles, Scout, and Keeper of the Forest coming out here. So, of course, uh, Keeper of the Forest, the final band, actually, by Ready for a Miracle. Keeper of the Forest, not really a band uh, anymore nowadays, uh, as far as the uh, Captain Spit goes. Um, it seems like he's been he's been allowed to either be picked up along with the Tempest, usually, as far as the counter pick, or he just ends up getting banned in the next tier of bands. Uh, but but here, RFAM just does not want to give it to TMSR. Uh, they don't want to have to deal with it at all. So they use one of their two bands, actually, on Keeper of the Four. So it's kind of interesting there. Does open up for a Lodestone first pick from Too Much Sugar. Engineer, though, great response from RFAM. Of course, their go-to support. Warbeast is the response to TMSR. And then Master of Arms is the next pick for Ready for a Miracle. So there you go. All caught up here. I uh, must say, TMSR, kind of interesting, actually, with their picks. You look at that, you got both a couple suicide potential heroes in that War Beast and Lodestone. Uh, with that said, you also still have heroes like Ophelia still on the board. Um, Ophelia, Tempest, Parasite are all still on the board, with that said. I would, say, I would think along the lines of something like that, Tempest or Ophelia, though, if they're going to go for that, that synergy of the War Beast, obviously, with the minions and whatnot, for that push potential. Um, but uh, it is a, with that said, I mean... That's also assuming that they're not going to run a jungle war beast here. Parasite. Okay, they are actually going to go Parasite on top of it. So they go Parasite in the end instead of maybe the Tempest or the Ophelia here. Now that opens Tempest. up the doors. Okay, so yeah, Tempest is actually going to be the response for Ready for a Miracle. But So we're most likely going to see a laning war beast here as well as a Lodestone. Probably going to end up being in that middle lane. I mean, Lodestone by all means has great potential to be in the middle lane matchup. Um, it's not like it's it's an odd one. Uh, you know, with his stun, it does put him in a vulnerable spot, you can say, as far as the uh, rocket drill works. So, so when he's initiating in that middle lane, it, it could be a little bit troublesome, maybe not the most ideal compared to something like a Pebbles or a, a Deadwood or something like that. But in the end, he definitely still has that potential. So right off the bat, that's what I, th that's what I would assume we're going to see coming out from, uh, from TMSR here. So we'll see if that ends up being the case. But... Uh, as far as Ready for a Miracle is concerned, they got a strong start themselves, again, especially with that diverse pick and Master of Arms. Um, it gives them the option to either run that in that support or carry roll. Probably going to be more of that, that, uh, that at least the semi-carry to carry focus. Obviously, they do have the Tempest pick up here, more than likely going to be a Jungle Tempest. You do see right-click, Adro's right-click in that Ophelia still, so I guess there is possibility we could see a laning Tempest here. Um, although I will say it's it's been a while since we've seen either a suicide or even a mid laning tempest, so I don't know if that's uh, what we're gonna see in the end. I don't know if that would be the most efficient choice here. And actually, you look at the bands coming out by TMSR. They're, they're just passing up banning Ophelia, probably for that reason. They say, you know what, if you want Ophelia, that means you're probably gonna have a laning tempest. We're fine with that. So it's it's now a decision here for Mikey Man, who's the captain. 
for RFAM to see if they actually want to uh, they they want to go with that and, and uh, just adjust to the Tempest in the laning phase. But Andromeda is the pickup by TMSR, so they get their solid support option there. Obviously, good synergy with a hero like Warbeast with the Aurora the minus armor. Um, the Swap always a nice ability to have against a hero like Tempest as well. So Magnus. they passed up the likes of something like a Glacius, a Pyromancer, a Torturer though. But uh, Andromeda, again, pretty sound hero. And I've always said I'm, I'm a fan of her, so happy to see her picked up here by Too Much Sugar. Um, as far as the Hellborn team, you got Magnus actually coming out for RFAM. So maybe a little bit more of an idea of what we possibly could be seeing here. Probably going to be something like a Suicide Magnus with uh, potentially a Master of Arms Engineer middle. And uh, we'll see what their final pick is as a uh, right-click on Demented Shaman actually coming out over here by RFAM. So... That would be interesting to see. Final pick for TMSR, though. As far as where they're going, their short lane is definitely something they could still use here. Um, at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they do go for more of that suicide option. I mean, you could run a short lane War Beast. Uh, I, I would think so. I mean, I don't know if that's the most ideal here of what TMSR is going to be looking to go, but uh, in the end, it does. It, it wouldn't be out of the question. I know they also are a fan of that Pestilence. Is he still on the board? Yeah, Pestilence is still on the board, and that even goes further to that minus armor synergy. And you could run something like that short lane Pestilence here. Um, they're going to go Predator, though. They're going to go Predator. They're going to go the hard carry here. Obviously, he takes advantage of that physical presence of this team here. Um, so definitely a sound pick in the end. And with that stone hide, great against uh, many abilities in the game. And you look at the Hellborn team, nothing different over there. Other than, of course, the Tempest Ultimate can still be locked down by that. But great against a hero like Engineer can use that stone hide uh, to help him out against the energy field. So the final pick for Ready for a Miracle now going to be coming out here as far as, uh, as, far as they are concerned. Let's see what that one is going to be. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, actually, yeah, one sec. Let me actually grab a co-caster here. I, like I said, I wasn't uh, able to get a hold of a co-caster initially, but I think I might have got one, so always helps out getting a co-caster. Let me actually set him up real quickly to be able to join me. Do -do -do. All right. You ready for a call? All right, let's see if I can get that figured out. Anyways, uh, so uh, the final pick coming out, it is going to be the Dimension Shaman in the end, coming out here for uh, for Ready for a Miracle. So they finish strong with the Dimension Shaman pickup. Balthazar, who is their go-to player, go-to carry player, I should say, is uh, is going to be playing that Dimension Shaman. So again, their lanes. Pretty, uh, pretty expecting of what uh, what we're going to be seeing here. That's Suicide Magnus, Master of Arms Engineer Middle, Demented Shaman in that short, and then of course Tempest in his own jungle. Type. So, solid lineup for ready for a miracle, but at the same time, you know, good, a uh, lot of physical presence over here on the leading side. I will say that's where the Storm Cloud could definitely come into play. We usually talk about the aggressiveness of the Storm Cloud with the minus armor that it applies to the enemies, but. The, the, the defensive nature of it here, you put it on yourselves if you're going into a push or you know a team fight's about to happen, could definitely help out great, great against this Legion team here as far as their physical presence is concerned. So that's going to be interesting to see that takes place. Okay, it looks like uh, he is able to join. So here we go. Let me go ahead and give him a call. As you can see, I'm planning to be joined by Swindle Melons here once again. I'll get that figured out. Melons, you there? Yeah, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, buddy? Pretty good. Still the same issue. I don't know oh, what yeah. the hell is going on, but it's a little better. Okay. So. <laughs> well, we'll deal with it today. It's better than better than doing a solo cast in the end. So <laughs> appreciate you uh, joining once again. So oh, I'm gonna have a pause here to start things off. But anyways, welcome. So I uh, I obviously you're just jumping into the game now, so you missed the uh, the drafting. Please so having a live there. But uh, you have any comments right off the bat that you may notice here as far um, as the picks here? Yeah, uh, the, interesting. The moon first picked lodestone over engineer. That's something that uh, I, I've never seen anyone do. Really, I mean, I guess it's, I guess people have done it, but it's nothing I've ever seen TMSR do. And they went for a very aggressive type of lineup, uh, really weak support in the laning phase and Andromeda. So we can pretty much assume it'll be Andro Pred short lane, and they'll probably 
put the the lodestone solo mid, and it's sort of like a one v two, and uh, our ready for miracles lanes are fairly obvious. You can pretty much assume yeah. it's going to be uh, MOA NG with the mag suicide and the DS short lane. So, uh, I think. TMSR's lineup's a little more polished, and it's got a lot more late game potential. Uh, it does rely very heavily on physical damage, but it shouldn't be too big of an issue. But DS, if Ready for a Miracle can get pretty far ahead, they'd be in a good spot, especially if DS can get to like level 11 quick, mm -hmm. because a ton of armor, obviously, Lodestone kind of counters it. But if they can just kind of stack up on some physical armor and buy vestment to negate Parasite, they'd be pretty good. But uh, we'll have to see. The one thing to note is you never really want four right, melee heroes against Engineer and Tempest. And yeah. that's what TMSR's got right now. Oh, wow. That's true, yeah. <laughs> four melee heroes. And e even Andromeda, I mean, as far as her range is concerned, it's not, it's not the longest. It's only 400 range as far as her presence is concerned with the auto attack. So, uh, yeah, that's actually a really interesting observation there coming out. But Hellborn team, oh, they're making their way into the jungle right here off the bat. Andromeda and Parasite obviously nearby. Probably not going to be an initiation, but just going to say hello. But... RFAM clearly wanting to take presence here in the jungle. Get some more to sites down, it looks like. Mm. They're, I don't, they're ward, I, they're not using huh. the counter wards to block. I mean, that ward by Fitzke is not really the greatest, because if you just, if you place a common counter ward to block that hard camp, they, then that ward would be countered. So, mm. not really sure what they're doing here. Um, and actually, I was wrong. It's going to be a... It's MOA. MOA bought support items, so I think it's going to oh, be... Wow. It might actually be a tri lane aggressive in Tempest Mid, and it is. Wow, I wow. didn't see that coming. Okay, yeah, That's neither new. did I. <laughs> Holy crap. I, I was the same as you. I just assumed it was pretty obvious. As, by the way, they're going to counter ward this ward aside that was placed by Adro there in the camp. So, yeah, they even saw him place that, and they took advantage of it. So, good start for them. But how about this decision? I mean... <laughs> Kind of letting it sink in here. What, what, what of it? Yeah, that ward is a pretty big deal that it got countered, and that's kind of just an experience on Ready for Miracles side. I mean, the whole point of running down into the opponent's jungle is five, is so that you can gain control of that area, so that they can't just instantly counter ward you. Um, the lanes are good. They're going to need to establish lane control very quickly. Uh, they have a very high kill potential with this lane, even against the uh, aggressive jungler. But the proper way for TMSR to play this is just moon to farm, maybe level three, level four, grab a wild hunter or a good creep, yeah. and then you'll have a distinct level advantage. And they also have the pull on block, so expect them to get a quick pull off, probably farm it real fast, and if they can just get a level advantage down here, it's going to be really tough for even a three stun tri lane to contest. Mm -hmm. Mid lane, I think, is pretty even, and up top, DS should have a really easy time with KZ's War Beast. Yeah. Uh, speaking of also, it's especially with this TMSR team, you know, they, they're picking up Haxor and going into Cycle over two. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how the roles are going to develop over time, but Haxor is actually playing the Lodestone here, and you got Slicks going back to his carry roots, uh, playing the Predator in this case. It seems like they're kind of switching back up, off and forth, as far as who's playing that carry, maybe with certain heroes, but... You know, find that interesting that uh, Slicks mm -hmm. is playing the carry here this game, but I think Haxorn's taken more of the. Has he? He'll play Dam. He'll play like here most of the heroes that go blink. So I'm pretty sure he'll play like their Dampier. But Slicks is playing more of the the passive racing type heroes, and you're gonna have um, Haxorn taking the initiator type a lot more. You see, actually, a Kaiman coming in mid. Lodestone gonna stun through, land the head smash, the Q on top oh. for Moon Meander, and as you can see, they are howled as well, so it's not even necessary for Moon to waste any more mana because they hit very, very hard. Uh, 75 uh, on both of them. That's yeah. really lots of damage. Yeah, so the red hand's definitely helping right there, and good good job assisting with the Catman Champion, obviously, coming in. Good rock control initiation, and Bloodlust Kill coming out in favor of the Legion team. Obviously, Tempest not necessarily the best in terms of, in terms of getting away from ganks, and as we kind of saw right there, with some good assistance from Moon Meander, and Helping out Lowstone here is 11 and 2, by the way, against your 7 and 1 Tempest. So still very early on in the game, and obviously the kill's helping with that. But actually, Lowstone is going to take a stun right here, but we'll fall back in time. So uh, it's safe to say, though. I mean, definitely relying uh, quite a bit on this bottom lane. Is is it more? You think it's more important to get the farm on Magmas, or just make sure they lock down Predator here? Uh, the key they need to get kills, and they didn't block the pole, and they didn't block any Parasite spawns. So I mean, it kind of chalked it up to an experience. But this is kind of a lane they were destined to lose based on how they played it. <clears throat> yeah. uh, they really just don't have a prayer here on this. TMSR goes out of position, they grab some easy kills because they're now losing mid um, and there's still a free farming jungler who actually grabbed an invis and looks to be heading over mid, which should be a kill if uh, if Tempest wanders out too far. Yeah, Parasite with that invis. We'll see if, uh, he's, as you said though, if he wanders out too far. I mean, Massera right now hugging the tower, but here comes the creep by pushing out a little bit. I uh, wonder if he, he definitely seems like something is up. 
he has a feeling yeah. so see the thing is they've, they've been able to pull twice now and even though this one won't really get them lane control it's gonna enable predator to farm this camp at the tower and all they really need is to buy some time as you can see parasite invaded the other team's jungle he's gonna continue farming and eventually score another kill on mid so they, they just have to do something there's the ward but it's, it's just so late now that predator is about to hit level five he's already got boots i mean mag's not even out farming him significantly yep. they really need to make something happen if they want a chance in this yeah so right now demented shaman really is the only one that's uh, having the best time in the lane obviously he's he's winning this match but as you said it shouldn't be too difficult to do that in the end he has 23 and 4 against your 11 and 2 war beast but uh at the same time, Warbeast is still being a great contribution to his team. Of course, spamming those those ba that battle cry, which is now level three already. So his levels are managing to be pretty solid. It looks like on Keizu, and uh, of course, again, all across the board here for the Legion side, it's definitely looking pretty good for them. Top lane, low stone haste rune coming in. Dimension Chama needs to be careful. Here comes the Skulls getting pressed out as well. They're gonna lock him down. Belts are in a lot of trouble. I don't see him getting out of this. He's going for a turn kill, if anything, but not even close. Smackdown on top of that. Not a good start here for RFAM. Yeah, and this is why you see a lot of teams running junglers instead of this long lane tri lane. The long lane tri lane's not bad, but I really don't think it works well with a hero like Mag. You just need something with more stun range at level one, like rally, fade, something of that sort, so you can actually set up kills from afar. And you also you, you run the risk. I mean, Parasite's been present for both of the kills that have happened thus far, and of course he's getting a lot more experience than the comparable MOA or Engineer. So I mean, this is what's going to happen if you can't make plays with your tri lane or at least block spawns. Yeah. See, uh, see Warbeast even getting close to the tower. I mean, hell, he's already level 6, so again, his start looking good. How's Predator doing, by the way? Oh, Tempest actually running into Parasite, but in the end, just kind of boxing him out. So Tempest also uh, kind of getting boxed out here. Parasite takes over the Vagabond and will continue to farm with it. Predator, in the meantime, at the bottom lane. Yeah, he's 15-3 and three right here. Speaking of down here at the bottom, Andromeda getting jumped on, so they're looking for the kill, and they will get the kill. Fitzke falls right there. Adric gets credit. Actually, leap in from Predator, but... He's just kind of toying with them. He knows they used all their abilities, and uh, he is going to be fine. So they do at least get a kill here at the bottom lane, so that's what they need as you're putting out. But Lodestone wants a counter kill. He's going to jump in right here on a Magma Thacus. Cannot stun away. He is going to be able to steam pat. That will be good enough for now. Running away. Tur comes out. Down goes Magma. So the head smash is too damn powerful. But is it going to be at a cost? Oh, the Shatterstorm. The bottom charges. Haxorin is going to live. Not often you see that used defensively like that, but it does save Haxorin in the end. Yeah, up top, you see a Wild Thunder coming in and a level 7 Warbeast, so something might happen soon. Yeah, no right. silence nope. up just yet on Moon, though, so they will not really have that burst to get him down before he can pop heal. Yeah, he's going to kind of hang out here. I don't know. Yeah, he's definitely not going to hit level 6 in the process, at least at this point. Going to go for another invis of anything, but Demented Shaman's not pushing up far enough, it looks like, so... I think DS will be fine in the long run, or will he? I mean, there's uh -oh. the opening leash coming out. Old T form activated by Warbeast. Hill Pump going to be used by Demented Shaman. But again, those auto attacks so strong. In the meantime, in the middle lane, Tempest also being jumped on. He doesn't have mana for his elemental void. Even if he wanted to use it right here, he doesn't have the mana. He will stun Lowstone. Poor coming in. Kex not going to be dodged by Haxorin. No turret on top of that. And actually, Lodestone will survive right there. you got to figure maybe the turret would have been the better option there. Instead of the keg, but in the end, Lost gets away again. More kills happening for TMSR here. It's going to be really difficult for Ready for Miracle to come back into this. They're going to lose control of the long lane pretty soon if they ever had it in the first place. Um, Magma still hasn't finished his upgraded boots, and Slicks just did, so. I mean, they, they in essence have won every single lane, yep. and they have the benefit of having a jungler. And it's, I mean, it's, this is what you kind of expect. Um, you need just to have more control of the game when you run these double support lineups. Otherwise, the jungler will inevitably take over because you, you're not contesting him. And he's, I mean, there's three lanes he can make stuff happen in, and your supports are stuck in the long lane with no boots. Yeah. It's just bound to happen. Yeah, I mean, so, so you kind of look back at, uh, I mean, well, we stressed out from the very beginning, but this decision here by RFAM, definitely different, trying to, trying to change something up, but... Gotta wonder if, if they went for more of the conventional setup if things would be a bit different right now for uh, for RFAM. But obviously that's that's kind of in hindsight at this point, so... I think they sure, but... would have done fairly well. They were outmatched in the late game. I mean, you can't really allow a Predator free farm, so yeah. you kind of had to contest him, especially since they don't have really a premier suicide, and uh, Lodestone's also pretty much unkillable. 
Uh, oh. In a 2v1 mid. Ooh. Tempest gonna be jumped. Tempest will fall. Master of Arms is kinda sitting in the background. Port's coming. The Magma's just out of range of the stun, so no damage coming from that. Moomin is still in trouble, but it is gonna buy him time to invest the creep. Gets the soldier, and he is gonna run away. Warby's nearby. Obviously, no stun's coming up for him, but here comes Shadowstar. The big initiation from Low Zone. Daggles Master of Arms. He's gonna be pushed forward, but Warby's assisting. Exposed Demented Shaman. A breakable is applied. But he will fall shortly after. It is just disastrous here for RFAM. I mean, they're just falling apart at the scenes. But even more so, TMSR just playing very active, very aggressive across the board. And it's it's continuing to look ugly. <laughs> Unfortunately, as early on as it is, I hate saying that always, but TMSR well, looking really good here. It's it's kind of out of reach already for RFAM. They just, there's no bright spot on their team. Tempest still doesn't have boots. In fact, DS and MOA and Mag are the only three players who do, and at nine minutes, it's really just not what you're looking for. Uh, Lodestone missing a stun. He might actually be in trouble here. Tempest ult is up. Um, he Lodestone does not have his ult, but, I mean, it is Lodestone, so yeah. probably a good idea to just run away. You never know what could happen. Yeah, those plates, and, you know, he has level nine. He has a level advantage, has a steam boots already with power supply. I mean, he's probably wasn't going to be a kill. Not even level six uh, Magmas, so... Not gonna risk it. Predator in the meantime at the bottom lane. Speaking of Magnus, he will stun it right here. Stone was just used, so doesn't have that anymore to mitigate. Does he have any TP support coming? And he does. Not even necessary in the end. Master of Arms and Engineer trying to chase, but Predator able to get away. And that's just another sign right there of how things are just going pretty bad already for RFAM. They try to collapse on a lone Predator, and they can't even accomplish that. Top lane, Balthazar taking some more harassment, but Warby's falling back. Uh, look at that Warby's farm, by the way. 390 gold per minute. This is your Suicide Warby's in a matchup that definitely was not favorable for him, but obviously that's where the team support comes into play. And all of a sudden, Casey's level 9 already has an Abyssal, Sol Abyssal Skull Steam Boots. And uh, is looking dangerous himself. Hey, they are going to try to clear up the Triple Stack Ancients, though, at least, so making use of that here is uh, RFAM, so good for them. Kind of, uh, well, they have to to an extent. <laughs> Yeah. It's a shame that it's coming this late. Uh, Max actually going to pop his ulti too. It's, oh, it's worth it. They're going to get lots of experience off this. But uh, what you're looking in this kind of lane, you want to just totally. And Parasite's probably going to uh -oh. steal a free kill on this Magnus <laughs> as well, but, unless he picks somebody else. But you want to gain control, win the lane fairly heavily. He's actually going to kill. Uh, yeah, he's going to kill Engineer. I think I'm away. Yeah, he had no oh, stun. So shit. Magnus in trouble too. He's just chilling here in Steam Bath. But Jeez. I mean, he's pretty dead if Parasite sticks around. Um, but you, you just you, you want to take those ancients after you do well in the lane, yeah. and oh, yeah, no. was down. they didn't really ever do that. So the ancients are coming up, but now it's more out of desperation versus part of the a coordinated game plan. Yeah. Double tap coming out for Mumiander right there. He is 3-0-3, been very active himself, but again, as a team, they really just have been. You look at Hacks, we're in 6-0-1 on that Lodestone. 11-1 overall hero kill advantage, we're just now passing 11 minutes into this game. So, you know, it's kind of funny, I brought up, brought up the point, it's, it's obviously off of uh, minimal games played, I think it's like 6 or 7 in total, but uh, RFM came in here with a pretty high kill per game average, something around 27 the kills Legion per game. Takes down a it's the highest tower. of the teams in the Diamond Division so far, but... Uh, not, not, not happening here. That average is going to drop quite a bit after this game, that's for sure. Only having the one so far, and in fact, TMSR the one kind of taking it to them instead. So, and now 11 and a half minutes in, bottom tower goes down. You know how Predator, he's also building up very nicely. 325 gold per minute for him, and Sanitarius most likely going to be finished for him soon. With that said, Portal Key already on Lowstone. Jeez, that's not good. That's Sanitarius. It, when it comes down to these kind of drafts, when they match up against each other, it all just comes down to the very early game. I mean, if they, if our fam got a couple of kills in the tri lane, started off with the lead, and maybe got boots on their supports so they could roam a bit, it's a totally different game. But when when you don't get any action, and the other team takes advantage of your lanes, and then you get behind, there's just no coming back. You, know, you're, you're, you have to stay ahead. And uh, that's how you win the game. Up top, Warby's might actually oh. die. Oh, no. Yep. Yeah, but they're going to be countered. Lowestone comes Holy with a Shadow Storm. Head smash. Warrior. Down no. goes Master and Tempest. I mean, nothing is working for RFAM this game. Basically, nothing is working. So, I I think we're all just kind of eyeing at that timer of <laughs> 15 minutes and probably going to call it quits and move on to game number two because this, uh, this is just not a game that you want to yeah, you want to remember. If you're the Hellborn team. Did I just see an Insanitarius on Warbeast? I think I just saw him purchase one. As well as uh, Predator getting delivered his, so. Going a different build here on Warbeast, but you know, kind of just having fun with it, of course. Yeah, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? I always like uh, asking 
co-casters, the thoughts of, you're in a best out of three series here, you're in game number one, you're getting smashed. It happens. Do you, do you, do you still say, okay, maybe let's try to play Malaysia off, maybe try to come back, or are you finished, just know what, let's just move on. Mm, as soon two. as, it depends. I mean, there's a lot of times when someone will say a game is lost, and it really isn't. This game obviously is really lost, but <laughs> when the game is over, you know, the, there's no use in playing on yeah. unless you've got, you know, a strategic reason. Like, uh, the other team is from a region that's, you know, really late at night, and keeping <laughs> them awake will put you at an advantage, or, um, you know, it, it, the thing, when it's 15 to 2, you know, you have the morale. One thing you can do is just wait till you get a couple kills even if they require like seven buybacks and then concede you know just to yeah. boost the morale a little bit before you go into the next game you know you just do little things like that but most of the time if you're getting crushed and it, you just want to end it quickly um, the other thing you can do is as you're getting crushed you just kind of toil around and just plan on your draft because the other team's still trying to win the game so yeah. you can use the time but if you're get demoralizing your team by staying in the game, then it's probably a good call to throw in the towel. Yeah, you know, ready for a miracle. I know it's obviously a great match or tough matchup even against TMSR here. Again, this is a team that a lot of people are very curious to to see being a top six team going into this weekend. Um, so getting in the getting in the money as far as prize pool is concerned, but obviously running again into a very good team in TMSR here. And so I think it's a mix of that, but also just this game specifically of. Uh, they, they, they made a decision that just didn't seem like it was the, the best choice in the end. They tried to play Champion a little different. Of no yeah, the more conventional probably would have been the better. But in the end, it is what it is. So game number one, uh, getting closer and closer to possibly ending here and moving on to that second game. Yeah, then Sanitarius. Everyone's going in Sanitarius. That's kind of an interesting troll. You're on the Legion side. Parasite even has one. Loso just purchased one. I'm sure Andromeda would get one if she could, but not going to happen. There's the vote to concede. And, and with yeah. that, the 15 minutes, win. they say, well, enough is enough. We're not going to let it go on further. And that means game number one is going to go to too much sugar. So, uh, yeah, RFAM, again, a new team here in the Diamond Division for Cycle 2. A, a solid team with that said, but clearly running into a difficult, difficult opponent here for them. So, any final words on that match, Wendell? Not really. Um... Just a little, just honestly, team of star outclassing RFAM, and that, uh, that that's it, you know? Better team won. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Better team definitely won in TMSR right there. So we'll see, though, game number two. Definitely, I mean, again, I have watched these guys against Locomotives. They beat Locomotives. They beat Justice League. They've obviously beat some quality teams. Clearly a team that can't compete here in the Diamond Division, at least. But uh, So I'm, I'm hoping, I'm sure a lot of people are that, hoping that they bring uh, something else to the table for game number two. But we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. We're going to take a short break right here. I, I, I promise you it should be short. As long as the players are ready, we'll be good to jump back in. But stay tuned, guys.